Hi, this is Dr. Mindy Curry. I'm a naturopath in the Portland, Oregon area. I do house calls and I have a small office in Milwaukee. And I'm here today to tell you about some of the medicinal and food as medicine uses of this lovely plant, the black currant, the forbidden fruit. What's interesting about this black currant species here, um, this one is Ribus nigrum, and it's it was illegal, illegal to grow these in the United States for a hundred years. Can you imagine that? And that's kind of an interesting story to start out with. Um, basically, what happened is the settlers came over to America and they saw all these beautiful white pine forests, and so they killed them. I mean, they cut them down to use to build our nation, but they cut down the white pine so severely that it was basically gone. All these white pine forests were gone. And so the first project of the new, the new forestry service was to replant the white pines. And they looked into what was going on and how to do this, and, and they ordered a whole bunch of white pines from Europe. But when all these trees came in, they were infested with a fungus, a nasty fungus. And it gets more complicated because this fungus, in order to grow on these white pines, needs an intermediary species, a secondary species, the black currant. And so the government decided that they would get rid of people's ability to grow the black currant in order to um, preference the white pine forest that they were trying to bring back. Um, and that lasted pretty much a hundred years. It was illegal in the United States to grow black currants until um, a, basically one man who wanted to grow black currants, uh, who had um, been a, a chef, I think it was, a chef over in Europe. He had, he had lived there for a while and he came back here and he was looking to do some farming and he wanted to know why why can't I grow these here? And so he went in and actually by himself almost um, lobbied Congress and got Congress to, to change their law. And, and that is really wild. So the black currant, it's a native to Europe. This one here is a native to Europe, but there are actually black currants in, that are grow wild in the Northeast. And <clears throat> so it's kind of interesting that the white pine, so ruined by a fungus that lives on both this plant and that plant, that this would end up being the forbidden fruit. And it's a pity too, because it's a really wonderful fruit. It's extremely medicinal, extremely medicinal, and actually a pretty great food. Okay, so here in the United States, these black currants have been legal to grow since 2004. And what's great is since the old settler days, um, they've developed uh, strains that are resistant to the fungus. So they're not really a danger to the white pines anymore. And there is some suggestion that the early science that they were doing was rather flawed anyhow. There's maybe not as much danger to the forest for growing these guys as people once thought. Um, but in any case, black currant berries have been used regularly as food in Europe and they've been made into wines and cordials and sauces and jams, juices, baked into desserts. It's actually a really great medicinal food. Take a look at these leaves. You can kind of see their distinctive pattern. And then the current itself, little berries there. They're very black, kind of stand up for their name. Now, as a native food, um, they have two times the antioxidants that blueberries have, four times the vitamin C of oranges, more potassium than bananas. 
They are a great source for several other minerals, just kind of a general nutritive sense. This one's just in a pot in my backyard. I got it from a nursery. They are native to Europe and Asia, but there is a species of black currant that grows wild in Northeast, I believe, America, and that is the Ribus americanum. Now, these black currants have been used medicinally for quite a while in a number of ways, a number of parts of this plant have been used medicinally, but it has been studied also researched and has found some benefits for skin problems, glaucoma, hypertension, Alzheimer's, cancer. It's really, really rich in anth anthrocyanidins, and that is what makes these berries so black, those anthrocyanidins. And that's the deep purple pigment, and it's a very strong antioxidant. And in glaucoma, studies have found that these Anthrocyanins decrease vision loss and increase blood flow to the eyes. Now beware, there's an even more interesting is that for a while now in the U.S. there's been a product sold as black currants that isn't actually black currants. So know your black currants. There's a product out there that's actually just um, some black, small black grapes that they've been calling currants, and so we've actually got recipe books telling us to use these black currants when they're really talking about those weird little black grapes, uh, raisins, little tiny raisins. Not the same thing as these clusters of actual currants. See the currant there always has this little, little tuft at the end. It's very black, much like a blackberry, I mean a blueberry, excuse me, much like a blueberry, but with like a little little bit of the flower still stuck at the tip. And the leaves, of course, are much different. And the flavor is much different. This fl tastes more like a blueberry mated with a juniper tree and had some unholy union and created this, this rather tart, a little bit sour berry that just makes amazing food when you work with it just a little bit. Okay, so now black currants. Black currants also have antimicrobial and antiviral properties. They've been studied for, of all things, for the herpes virus and shown to stop the adhesion of virus infected cells, reducing the spread of the virus to new cells. Um, it also can be used, these berries can be used for hoarseness and sore throats. Um, another interesting thing is the seeds. The seeds down there inside those little berries can be made into black currant seed oil. And this can help stomach ulcers by decreasing the bacteria H. pylori. It's also rich in essential fatty acids, um, which are very anti-inflammatory and very antioxidant in general. Um, it's been helpful for reducing the signs of skin aging for dry skin. This black currant seed oil has been used on the scalp to improve scalp help, health for dry scalp or thinning of hair. Some people have thought that this would help. Um, and it can be used just as a oil hair treatment. If you've got some dry brittle hair, you can put some of that black currant seed oil on it. Um, it's a good face mask too. It's uh, just the leaves even, even these leaves, check out these beautiful leaves. These leaves can be used as a tea. The leaves themselves are medicinal and they can be used for throat problems and have been used for things like gout and rheumatoid problems. Um, also for flushing the kidney because it's rather diuretic. Okay, so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start picking these berries and then we're gonna take them into the kitchen. And what I really like is a syrup. I love a black currant syrup to put on meats and cooking.
They're really easy to pick. You can just pop right off. Hello, we're back in my kitchen. We've got uh, a bunch of black currants that have been washed, and we're going to go ahead and make these into a syrup. Syrup's pretty easy to make, and with this, you know, my black currant is, I've got just one bush, so that's a pretty normal amount for this bush so far. Maybe it would grow bigger if I grew it in the ground, but uh, it's pretty much a delightful amount for uh, one or two meals worth of sauce to go on a meat. Today we're going to put these on Cornish game hens, but other times it could go on steak or even a pork would be really great with these black currant sauce. And it's a fairly simple sauce. It's basically just taking these black currants, getting them on the burner, a bit of water, and a bunch of honey. Personally, I say less honey than you have berries. I don't really want it to be just a complete diluted syrup. I want this to be a really strong syrup when I'm done. Like I said, go ahead and stir that a little bit. Get those all mixed up and we'll bring those to a boil and let them simmer for a while until it reduces a bit. See right now it's just uh, honey, water, and berries. Maybe a bit more honey. Okay, let's press this sauce. It's been simmering for about a half an hour, maybe a little bit more than that. I'm just going to try to crush the skins up a bit more. Before I take it through the sieve. potato masher there. You put this into basically your typical kitchen mill. And mash it up just a little bit more. Look at how red and beautiful they got, that got in there. It's a blackberry but a nice red sauce deep burgundy sauce really. Just something you could add red wine to and make it even more amazing. But I'm not going to do that today. And I'm just kind of mushing all the juices, a bit of pulp kind of out there. 
Let's try not to burn my hair. <laughs> Okay, and I'm going to add some black pepper. Actually, quite a bit of black pepper because I love black pepper on meat. This is going to go, like I said, it's going to be a meat sauce, a bit of salt. Stir that up. Put that in my sauce pot. Look at this beautiful, beautiful sauce here. Haha. <laughs> So now that I've shown you how to make some wonderful medicine, I want to remind you that it's very important to go see a doctor or a naturopath or at least an herbalist before starting any herbals for your conditions. For one thing, you may not really understand what your diagnosis is. You may think it's just a little bit of this and that that can be treated with some plants when it's really something serious and you're missing it and it could, could be fatal. Um, also, there are interactions between herbs and drugs, and there's also contraindications between some of the problems you may be having and the herbs you may think you need. <laughs> so don't start taking anything willy-nilly unless you're sure what's going on. And to be sure, come see a naturopath like me. I'm in Portland, Oregon. I do house calls in the greater Portland area, and I also have an office in Milwaukee.